Greetings, outstanding folks, and welcome back. It's GR Van. Uh, you've seen a lot of my trumpet videos that I've done lately. This will be an unboxing video. Now, this will be not be the normal unboxing video that I'm normally used to seeing, in which the unboxing is for a brand new instrument purchased from um, either Amazon, uh, Wish, or eBay. And it's usually for a brand new instrument. A lot of times, if trumpets or trombones or whatnot that are fairly fairly inexpensive compared to what you would find professionally. What makes this unusual is that I'm actually unboxing a used Bundy cornet that I bought through Reverb.com for $65. And uh, it just arrived earlier this afternoon. And uh, I was, uh, and with the, the uh, Bundy was, had the um, estimated year range of 1984 to 1990, so it was quite old. I uh, uh, had already seen the photographs, so I know what I'm getting into. I know it's not in mint condition. I was able to get it for $65, including shipping cost, which is a steal. And with Reverb.com, uh, it's usually going to be a gamble, because if you see an instrument that's at a very low price, a lot of times the shipping cost is huge. I did see a a tuba advertised on reverb for 300 bucks only to have about a 900 dollars shipping cost uh that's insane but uh this uh particular one uh bendy cornet uh i saw the pictures of it i knew it was much used and i knew it probably would be a gamble as far as whether it be usable or not and if it is great if not i didn't lose a whole lot I'm using my Trenchill Gerber to open up the package. And uh, one thing about Bundy, uh, from my time in high school and college, when I started out on a an Olds brand trumpet, which, uh, and think about other brands that were used by students, that for student level uh, instruments, the uh, Bundy brand, made by Selmer, is a well-respected brand, ranked up there at the time with brands like Olds, uh, Khan, Benj, and King. So I, I knew from the reputation of it that that it should, that uh, it has a chance of being a decent instrument. Opening up the box, got a lot of packing stuff in here. Try to get that cleaned up as much as I can. The seller did take the time to make sure it was well protected. I mean, it's about like driving down the road and protecting your grandmother, I guess. So I try to get all this out of the way. Get a couple more chunks here. Throw that off to the side. Oh, they and they also bubble wrapped the the cornet. Get this knocked out. Get this kicked out of the way. Remove the bubble wrap. No other spare stuff inside other than bubble wrap. That's good. This is this is pretty cool. This is actually sliding right off the case. So this is getting a little awkward, but it is what it is. <laughs> Bear with me. Well, got that out of the way, and this is the case. Interesting design. It's all all metal. Uh, yeah, it's got a little bit of rust on it. That's standard for something that old, made out of steel, or probably. Yeah, it looked like it was probably plated steel of some sort. Handle still good in shape. Latches good shape. And yeah, the hinges are good. So let's see what's inside there. Oh, they even bubble wrapped inside the case. That's definitely making sure it's well protected. Um, throw that off to the side. Use a that foam. Use foam on the inside. Pretty solid case. Um, see what came with it. Have a ball of valve oil. I'll keep that. I'll keep that handy just in case I need to lube up the valves for the function check. Uh, container slide grease. 
That'll also be handy. It also came with its own uh, boar snake. That's good. That way if I travel this thing for get my clean kit, I'll at least have that. And it comes with a Benson Box 7C mouthpiece. And uh, I'll set this case down. Now, it's definitely a cornet mouthpiece. I'll wipe this sucker down. And to compare it, now I'm gonna compare it with the 7C mouthpiece that came with my Mendini trumpet. As you can see, much shorter. The uh, body, also, much smaller diameter. So it's definitely made for a cornet. It might fit in a piccolo trumpet. But the cup size, about the same. And it's definitely an old Vincent Bach. I might have to, I don't know whether. Yeah. I might have to do some work on this mouthpiece. And uh, so I'll test to see if my one and a half trumpet mouthpiece will fit in there. I'm, get, I'm betting against it. And now, the cornet. Yeah, it's got a, I'll do a little fun, uh, structural, the bracing's good. Yeah, it's definitely, uh, the finish is definitely um, showing its age. Got rubbed off here. The uh, lacquer's gone from here. Uh, they did say it had a few small dents in it, probably in the bell. Uh, but actually, it looks looks in pretty decent shape for a, for an instrument that's over four, 30 years old. Now, a bit of a comparison between trumpet and cornet before I do the function check. So that trumpet, as you can see, the trumpet is a lot longer, and height and height wise, the cornet's actually taller in the direction uh, along the axis of the uh, valve casings, so that the bends in the and the tubing aren't as sharp as, the, as that on the trumpet. And also the main tuning slide on the trumpet is near the bell end. On the uh, cornet, it's closer to the lead pipe. So uh, my quick visual inspection, I don't see anything obvious, obviously wrong with it. Uh, bottom valve caps work. Um, this thing does not have a kick ring for the third valve slide. Um, I could probably get that that and a set screw uh, as some, at a parts store. I'll see for, first how the slides work. Tuning valve, tuning slide, main tuning slide works. A little sluggish, but it works. First valve slide works. And third valve slide works. Water key works. Looks like the uh, uh, cork part of the water key has been replaced on third valve slide. Same thing with the one on the on the main body. Now second valve slide, you just never know about the second valve slide. This one was actually came out pretty easily. I was actually amazed. Um, because usually on trumpets, it's usually a crapshoot on whether the second valve slide actually comes out easily or not. Uh, top, uh, yeah, top caps for the valves work. Let's see. Second valve is a little noisy. First valve is a little noisy, but pretty good movement. I won't have to mess the oil in the thing. That'll be handy when I do the function check. Now, just as a make sure because of the difference, I am not expecting my one and a half C trumpet mouthpiece to fit in, fit in there. Yeah, there's no way that'll work. So I can't actually use the, as a, the mouthpiece as a control for comparing the sound between the two instruments. Um, I'll do a couple of quick notes out here to see if it's playable. Yeah, 
it seems to play all right. I'd say that's a got a good deal. The pa definitely passes the function check. Now to do a little sound comparison. Let's see what I can do. You and uh, what I'll do is instead of using my usual one and a half C mouthpiece, I'm gonna use the seven C mouthpiece that came with the trumpet as a comparison because it's the same cap size. <laughs> Okay, first uh, t uh, comparison test will be the uh, chromatic scale, working up from low F sharp, try to get up to the high C. And that's uh, the standard range on the trumpet. Now I'll do the same thing on the cornet. Well, it's got the full standard range operable through that. Second test. Work up the high C and try to work a chromatic left from there. It's a good thing I'm in a recliner just in case I have to lean back and have a... Well, I squeaked out what, it's probably a double G. I'm gonna try the same thing on this. Well, this does have a double G in it. That's definitely promising. Third test, low range. as I could get. Close to double pedal C, but quite sharp. Try the same thing here. Oh, it definitely has a pedal range in it. So, final part of the comparison test was be a standard to operability. Uh, just a quick little, um, uh, quick, quick plan exercise. What I'll do is I'll use, uh, for a comparison, I'll use the Edwards Hovey method, page 38, exercise four which is the, uh, one of the exercises on 16th notes. And do that same thing on the cornet. Well, I'd say one thing about this cornet for being something that was built probably when I was in college or maybe shortly afterwards. Um, this thing definitely passed the function test. It definitely does is doing everything I needed to do. Uh, it doesn't sound like my trumpet because it's not a trumpet, it's a cornet. Uh, the way it's built, uh, 
have, and I've also had experience with it with a flugelhorn. Flugelhorn has really a mellow sound, but key the same. The trumpet is made for more of a biting sound for like marching bands and stuff like that. A cornet will be somewhere in between sound wise. And it's made mainly for blending in with string and woodwind instruments so that it doesn't stick out like a sore thumb like a trumpet would. That's why in concert band music, a lot of times you'll see trumpet players using parts that are actually written for cornet because a lot of times that music will not come with trumpet parts, it will come with cornet parts. And uh, would I use this instrument in a public performance? Probably not for the same reason. It's a cornet, not a trumpet. Most people have a demand for hearing the trumpet. They like the biting sound of the trumpet. And also, uh, uh, if I were to do it in a public performance, I would probably get it refinished, probably uh, replace the uh, throw ring for the third, val for the third valve slide, uh, so, and probably a few other things. But as far as a practice instrument, this thing's gonna be more than adequate. I'm definitely satisfied with it. So. Hope you've enjoyed the comparison and thanks for watching. All the best.